I'm Sheila Danduli. I've been a gardener since I was about 10, getting my brownie badge, and I've studied archaeology, anthropology, and evolution, as well as training and development. I turned to native plant gardening about eight years ago after learning about the dire straits of the Carolinian zone, that there's apparently only 3% of the biodiversity left. And now I have basically decided that biodiversity, enhancing biodiversity and, and helping others learn about it is, is sort of my retirement passion. And I'm, that's all I do in my free time. And what are the benefits to gardening with native plants as opposed to other plants? Ah, good question. Well, one of the things I've found is it is much easier to garden with natives. First of all, they have evolved to be in this area, and so maintenance is much less. It, they appreciate the soil, the, the air conditions, the, the weather, the water or lack thereof. Um, I have learned that when native plants are in a balanced ecosystem, they'll have many pollinators come to them. And so they are feeding things that will then pollinate them. You get lots of seeds and they seed themselves. So, at, but the biggest benefit for me is that I know that I am contributing to offsetting carbon. And I've been in the generation that is probably the biggest carbon footprint of the world. And so I'm willing to do anything I can to offset some of that carbon. Part of accepting native plants into my life was um, experiencing a real paradigm shift from trying to control nature and make a particular plant that was foreign or from a different country or a cultivar bred here to growing plants that originally came from here is accepting that insects and bugs and moths, etc., are part of my gardening experience. So now I can look at a smoothly aster and see the leaves are being met, eaten and think, oh, wonderful, because now I know that that is a particular pollinator, pollinator or insect that relies on that plant. And so, and it is getting its food or resources. And the plant has evolved so that it can withstand that. So I don't have to use chemicals. I haven't used chemicals since 1985. I don't need to use additives because a lot of these plants grow in very dry, poor soil, etc. So I see myself having a very different look, orientation towards my garden than I had previously. So tell me more about not using anything in your garden, like chemicals. Sure. Well, native plants only need what is in our soil now. So we don't need to add composts and additives, fertilizers, etc. And then also the other big anything is our, our chemicals. And if you notice this um, um, Coreopsis, this one still has leaves. But if we go over here, you can see this one in the middle of the summer had an incredible invasion down the stems of red aphids. And I thought, whoa, that's one of the biggest ever. And if you notice, it doesn't have any leaves yet left. There were ladybugs over on the other plant, and within a day they had come over, and I had about four or five ladybugs because they are threatened these days. There aren't that many around. And they were just having a picnic. And that was as much fun to watch not not the gruesome aspect of it, but just to see the diminishing numbers of aphids um, and the ladybugs probably beefing up so that they could probably multiply. And I would never have seen that if I had been using chemicals. We need these bugs in order to pollinate our forests and our plants. Can you tell us about the successes you have had with working with native species? Sure, um, many more than I ever had with other species. I'd put non-native species I'd put in the ground and two years later they'd be dead. But that doesn't happen with native species, nor with Labradors, that mine has just come out the door. Um, I had Paul O'Hara design this garden for me and I asked him to put in a prairie. And this is what the prairie looks like after four years. 
We have some very tall plants in the background, as you can see, prairie sunflowers that are up to 12 feet tall. We have some of the shorter ones. We have ones that are underneath the ground. We really don't have to do very much watering here. But some of the individual species that I am enjoy, I love this hairy panic grass that I have beginning to become a ground cover so that I can eliminate more grass in my garden. I've had success creating woodland areas. I've uh, some of the others. I everything is a success. Even knowing that, for example, this dogwood tree. There are two dogwood trees in here, and this one got too much sun. And I've learned this year that it's not a disease that this tree has, it, because it's not systemic and going branch by branch. It's just a sunburn that the tree had early in the summer, and I probably hadn't been paying attention to whether the garden needed a little water or not. Other successes are things like sedges, which I didn't even know the word, but now I know sedges make good edges. They are a low forb that blooms in, usually in the spring, and they're great ground covers. If you look in a forest, you'll see lots of little sedges around, um, and they often are little clumps with um, which you can separate, but they don't like to be separated. Having about five or six different kinds of sedges has really filled in my garden and makes it really look robust and wood woodlands like. I'm trying to achieve a woodlands look in my garden, and so over on this side, Paul O'Hara has planted many species that. I had never heard of before, or maybe if I had, I'm from the West, so I hadn't heard of a number of species around here. Sorry about my dog. Um, and so I have things like chokeberry, choke cherry, sassafras, serviceberry, elderberry, We're trying to create a woodland atmosphere. And the wonderful success of this is that when I walk into this part of the garden on a hot, hot summer's day, down in the woodland area, where we'll go in a minute, and it's only 12 steps away, it will be 10 or 12 degrees cooler than elsewhere. There are a number of species that would be so helpful in any garden that is, um, has a big tree that they could do some understory plantings underneath. 